Hello everyone, my name is Incoherence, and welcome to Stellaris. For those of you unaware of Stellaris, or perhaps you're just unfamiliar, all you need to know is that it is a space 4X slash grand strategy game from Paradox Interactive. That is the studio that created uh, Europa Universalis, Crusader Kings, and Hearts of Iron, but I'm fairly certain you know that already. Uh, Stellaris has just received both a massive update as well as an expansion. That massive update is so ambitious that they've dubbed it version 2.0 Sherry. Um, there is just a huge amount of significant changes that I can't even begin to get into it. So maybe we'll talk about it at a later date, but there has also been an expansion that is called Apocalypse. Apocalypse is centered on massive constructs that you can use to destroy planets, much like has happened here. You see this mega laser in the top right? We can only assume that it just fucking blasted this planet. And hopefully, I hope with my heart of hearts that this is an uninhabited planet. It's as if a million voices screamed out and then was suddenly silenced. That's maybe what happened, but we hope not. Anyway, I am going to jump directly into the game here, and we will talk about the changes and what's new in the expansion further on. So, first things first, we need to choose a an empire. Unfortunately, none of these particularly match the type of empire I want to play, so we're going to create a brand new one. I'm going to do this as quickly as I can. Hopefully, it won't be painful to the extreme. We'll find out. Uh, for those of you familiar with the channel, you will know that a couple months ago I played a mod called Imperium Universalis 4 EU4. Basically, we recreated the Persian Empire, the Achaemenid Persian Empire. It was only seven episodes long or something like that, but basically, I did a shit ton of reading in preparation for that because I'm a history nerd, and ever since, I very much wanted to recreate a Persian-style empire in Stellaris, and now it's the perfect opportunity to do so. So first things first, we need to pick a profile, and <laughs> I really like all of these. I particularly like the sort of aquatic humanoids. Uh, we have two here. They seem aquatic to me anyway. This is almost like uh, an aqua elf. I also particularly like these two guys. This particular fellow reminds me, or rather, this particular lady reminds me of the aliens from the Star Wars prequels. Hello there. The the ones that clone the New Zealand Django Fett, New Zealander. Um, I think we'll go reptilian. Uh, <laughs> God, all of these are female. Jeez, it's almost, it's like, you know, you never see a female dwarf. And this is probably why, because they all look just as ugly as these folks. It's something you would rather not see. Um, I kind of have a particular affinity for this particular portrait. It's almost like a raptor, like a velociraptor, Jurassic Park style, but then it's got these mandibles, like the elites from <laughs> Halo. I don't know, we're gonna go with that. Uh, species name, let's roll the dice here. I don't really have a name in mind. I don't mind Rathelion, though. Kalexanen. Ikarzuri. <laughs> uh, Othethi. You know what? No, I'm not really happy with any of these. Let's go. We will be the Cyruzi. <laughs> the Cyruzi. Let's go with that. Uh, I, or maybe the Kirusi. It's not... I think the pronunciation makes all the difference there. It's not just Cyrus, it's Cyrusi. <laughs> so, if we are the Cyrusi, then the plural would be Cyrusians. Cyrusians. And the adjective would, of course, be Cyrusian. Okay, you know what? I am... I am more than happy with that. Welcome, Cyrusi. Next, name lists. Okay, um, this is a bit of a problem because the reptilian name lists are just horrendous. It's like... It reminds me of the lizard men from Warhammer Fantasy. It's all like... Xeraxim, Xigza, Cool Gaff, Ragzag, all that shit. None of these are particularly fitting. Um... 
I'm sure one of these name lists wouldn't be so bad. Uh, we will not go with any of the Mammalian ones. Oh yeah, this is new. It's, um... New name lists added in the Sherry update. They've got one for the United Nations of Earth. They've got one for the Commonwealth of Man. And then they've got one that's got like a Latin slash Roman flair. As if the Roman Empire survived until the Space Age. Um, maybe we could go Avian? Lytok, Gobrook. Uh, you know what? Let's take a look at Molluscoid. I think they're okay. Gashush, Vegel, Golrum, Ethog, Schloss. You know what? I actually, I don't mind that. Let's go with that one. Traits. Okay. Uh, fuck. I, I did a quick run through before we began recording, but I did not, for some reason, look at the traits. So that's something we'll do in just a moment. First, we need to name the homeworld Cerusia. The star name will be... Uh, let's go... Yabra. Yabba dabba doo! No. Uh, we're going to be Cerusia. Cerusia, okay. And I think we want to be a dry planet to mirror the conditions of the Near East. Mesopotamia, Iran, Persia, any of these places. Uh, I think arid is probably an appropriate uh, descriptive, descriptive term. And we're going to stick with the old reptilian city. That's just fine. Okay, now, I spend a bit of time doing this, and I'm confident that this will be an alright representation of the Achaemenid Persian Empire. So first and foremost, we need an imperial ruler. We need to be authoritarian as a result. Uh, you could make an argument for either authoritarian or egalitarian, in my opinion. Uh, I'm pretty sure slavery was rare in the Achaemenid Persian Empire in comparison to the empires of the immediate area, like the predecessors, such as the Assyrians, so on and so forth. I'm pretty sure they were pretty big on slaves and... Uh, they were big on crushing people. <laughs> uh, we're, we have to be authoritarian, otherwise we cannot be imperial. If we're egalitarian, no imperial ruler, okay? So that's my... Uh, that's my argument. We also need to be a xenophile, primarily to represent the... Uh, it starts with a T. You know, it's when you are... T Fuck, that word has just fallen out of my head. It's when you tolerate. Good fucking lord, that's horrendous. When you tolerate people, okay? So the we're going for xenophile to represent the toleration that the Persians had for other cultures, other religions, so on and so forth. And then, of course, we have to be militarist to represent the military might of the Persian Empire, the unified military might that was used to crush rebellions and expand the empire, okay? And as far as... Oh, that ha we are now in a star empire, apparently. As far as civics are concerned, I think we obviously have to go for feudal society. This society is organized in a feudal manner, with a monarch whose rule relies on powerful vassals. So this will be used to represent the satrap system the Persians were a fan of. Basically, you know, client kings or governors uh, that... Mostly client kings of... of what used to be independent states that now swear fealty to the emperor, as it were. Um, so this will be good. This has the effect of reducing the effects of... Oh, sorry, let me just read it. The effects of subject power on relations is reduced by 50%, okay? Uh, and subjects are allowed to expand into unclaimed systems. So our vassals, or protectorates, will expand without our express permission. Um, you could make a... you could make an argument for most... Well, not most, but some of these different uh, civics. For example, warrior culture. The Persians were big on archery and horsemanship. Um, so you could make an argument for warrior culture, but I think the aristocratic elite and efficient bureaucracy are better arguments. Um, of course, the Persians had an aristocracy, an aristocratic class. And also, the effects here reduce our government 
governor recruitment cost. So that would be used to, for example, represent the satraps or the governors put in place to govern. Uh, because, of course, eventually we... Here's my thought. We will subjugate other empires and eventually we will annex them into the main body of the empire. If not possible, then we, we will just leave them as vassals and they can expand as they please. Uh, but I also think efficient, bu efficient bureaucracy will could be used to represent the uh, the tightly controlled core territories of the Persian Empire. Because the empire, like the, the Median Empire that had been dismantled by the Persians, uh, that was a pretty large empire to begin with. So I think, you know what, I'm actually going to go with efficient bureaucracy. I, th I'm, I think you could make an argument for the core of the Persian Empire being fairly efficient bureaucratically. I'm going to go with that over aristocratic elite just because I want the core sector systems. Okay, I think I'm happy with that, those choices. Now, for the advisor voice. Oh, these are new. Oh. Good lord, that guy's just chatty as hell. Um, I should mention that I have yet to play version 2.0 of... Stellaris, so I'm kind of going into this blind. I do have like 120 hours into previous versions. That's not a lot in terms of strategy gaming, but it's a fair amount. Let's just say that. So, I, yes, I'm going into this blind. Hopefully everything goes well. We are going to be the Cerusian Star Empire, okay? And the adjective will be Cerusian. <laughs> uh, flag. Okay, we are going to try to replicate the Achaemenid Persian flag, which of course is like red and yellow. That looks like hot garbage. <laughs> oh. Uh, could we maybe go with... I don't actually mind that one. Okay, so... What sort of symbol would we like? I do apologize. Uh, I tend to dawdle on this sort of stuff. I am not the quickest of players. I very much like to get immersed and... Oh, here we go. That's not so bad. The two-headed eagle. <laughs> Some weird space communist flag. What in the fuck? I think maybe... I think we should go with something that's a little bit more ornate. I would be okay with... I actually kind of like the sun thing. It doesn't really have any connection to the Achaemenid Persian Empire, but we're going to go with it anyway. Uh, I actually don't mind that field split in half. Uh, hmm. Actually, you know, we'll go with that. That's fine. Ship appearance. We are going to be reptilian. Before we get carried away, we need to go back to the name list and change our ship prefix. It is not going to be ISS, it is going to be Cerusian Naval Ship, CNS. And traits, finally. Let's see. We have two trait points. First, I think we ought to be charismatic to represent the diplomatic nature of the Persian Empire. Basically, they would rather buy your allegiance than crush you with force of arms, so I'm hoping that will represent it. Um, I'm not entirely sure what else we ought to be. Perhaps talented or intelligent just to represent... Like, talented to represent the, the pool of aristocrats or an educated class, something like that. I think we probably should be deviants to represent the different cultures, religions, and such throughout the Empire. Let's go with that. Um, perhaps we should be... I think we ought to be talented or... Well, we have two trait points, so let's just go for intelligent. That way we will, we will be ahead in technology. That's not really accurate, I don't think, but we will go with it. I think that's basically everything. Ship appearance, ruler. We need a ruler. Uh, let's go with a... 
why not? Let's have an empress, for the fuck of it. By the name of Pegroshlas, no. <laughs> Glorim, Beglosh, Gethmar, Garma. Actually, I don't mind Taglero. Let's go Taglero Schloss. Taglero Schloss. She is the Empress of the Cerusian... Oh man, I'm just slurring my words here because apparently I'm drunk as fuck. The Cerusian Star Empire. Apparently Schloss is the dynasty name. Uh, let's see. I kind of like the gray, actually, for her. And also the high color. What in the fuck is that? <laughs> what is that? It's like a battery pack or something? Who knows? Uh, yes, I do like that high collar, and... We need a proper room... ...for the Empress. That's actually not so bad. We've got, like, a nice Imperial-style... ...thing going on in the background there. Ooh, I really like this. This is perfect. That's exactly what we want. Okay, let's... ...save this. The Cerusian Star Empire has been saved. We are ready. Apparently, we are a feudal empire. Correct? Imperial. Technically, we should be a star empire. Correct? Let's just... Oh, I see. We've become a feudal empire because I've chosen feudal society. That will have to do. Save. Okay, let's just double check everything. We are authoritarian, xenophile, militarist. The Siruzi are charismatic, deviant, and intelligent. Okay, why not? I think we're done. Um, let's just go for a... medium galaxy. Let's not get carried away. Four to nine AI empires, one to two advanced. Let's go zero to one. I like to have everything random, so I'm not entirely sure <laughs> what I'm gonna get. Um, let's go one to two fallen empires. Uh, okay, Marauder Empires, I believe, are added in Apocalypse. Basically, they are empires that mostly fight within. There's infighting, but eventually, sometimes, a great Khan comes and unites all the tribes. Basically, this is to represent the steppe nomads of the Eurasian steppes, okay? There's a lot of infighting, but every now and again, you get Anatilla the Hun, you get a Genghis Khan, right? Something like that. We will go zero to one. I'm not so hot on that idea. Actually, let's guarantee we get one because it is a expansion feature. Uh, let's leave everything out else at default. Mid game start year, end game start year. This stuff is new in this update. Um, basically, affects when certain crises begin. And yeah, we're happy to leave the rest of this default. Now, as I said, we are going into this blind. I have read a few... Holy shit, this is loading like a motherfucker. Oh, we're in. Okay, I have read a few materials. I've watched a little bit of video, so I do know, for example, that we no longer have spaceports, but instead we have star bases. Entirely different thing. All right. We have a little blurb here about the rise of the Cyruzi. Cyruzi, my mistake. Let's see... Begin. We're ready to go. Okay, so this is the Yabra system. We have Cerusia here. No moons to speak of. Also interesting, it seems like we begin with a couple stations. We have a mining station here, a... Another mining station taking advantage of the star Yabra. We're getting a little bit of tech here from Schlarg. <laughs> what a hell of a name. Okay, we are going to, since we're at the 20-minute mark, we are going to check the rest of our tabs here, just to see what's going on. Uh, so here is Empress Teglaro Schloss. She is a reformer, increasing our unity. She's also an investor. Holy shit, giving us a bonus to energy credits. That's pretty handy, actually. Uh, we have no air to speak of. I bet if we were to unpause the game... Oh shit, no. We don't get an air immediately. Interesting. Let's see, we have an agenda of import-export. Increasing our food production, I assume, and our trade attractiveness. Very interesting. Um, as far as our budget is concerned, our biggest ticket item is building upkeep, starbase upkeep, ship upkeep, etc. 
Demographics wise, of course, we have eight pops across one world. Eight Siruzi. We have a production bonus of both food and energy credits. And then our advisor is, of course, the authoritarian one. The diplomat, the soldier, and the technocrat. Those are all new. I'm not sure if that's from the expansion or from the update. Can't say for certain. Uh, of course, eh, we have not seen anyone yet. We have not contacted anyone. Situation log empty. Let's pick our tech. Abigor. Female. Abrigosh. Male. Ethog. Female. Interesting. Very difficult to tell <laughs> the gender or sex from the name alone. Abrigor, of course, is an expert in field manipulation. So I think it would be... I'm going to go for all of the labs first, I think. If at all possible, that will allow us to... Uh, get better research. Abrigosh, an expert in military theory. We don't really need defensive armies. I would prefer to have monthly unity, actually. The quicker we start gaining unity, the quicker we get traditions. I'm going to go with that over farming. Ethog, an expert in voidcraft. Very interesting. Standard or... What in the fuck is this? Establishing new standards for the modeling and construction of Corvettes greatly improves the efficiency of the production pipeline. Well, I feel as if we should... Oh, fuck this one too. Improved Corvette hull... What in the fuck is this? This is all new too. Uh, do we want stronger Corvettes or do we want more Corvettes? I think we want stronger Corvettes. That would, that would be more resource efficient, I believe. That's going to be 45 months. Man, I feel as if research is already significantly slower. These all cost quite a bit more than I recall. Usually they're like 360 or something. Okay, um... Uh, let's look at our policies and edicts. War philosophy, unrestricted. Food stockpiling, minimum. I think we want to change our first contact protocol, protocol rather to peaceful. And we want refugees... I think we'll take citizen species only. Slavery will be allowed for now. Purge prohibited. So maybe at some point we could ban slavery, but for the time being, a minimal amount of slavery would be alright. What else is going on? Factions, of course, we have none. But we do have pretty high attraction to our state ethics. We also have attraction to egalitarian because we have enslaved pops, perhaps? You know what? I, I bet you... Yeah, we currently have our people in a caste system. The first thing I want to do is grant everyone full citizenship. That is going to be the first action of Empress Taglory or whatever. <laughs> Glory Allstead, Allred. What is her name? Uh, Tagloro. Very close. Tagloro Schloss, I should remember. Okay. Um, the one governor we have is by the name of Vashgo. Which, oh God, she has the worst skill imaginable. She is cheaper to recruit. <laughs> Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's go for something a little bit better. Someone like... Oh, shit. New leaders cost energy now, as opposed to influence. So we're stuck with Vajgo for now. Pablosh, our science ship leader, is carefree. Increasing our anomaly research speed. That could be worse, could be better. What else is going on? Close that. Okay, so this fleet manager is entirely new. I'm going to have to analyze this on my own time, off camera. Okay, let's look at our capital, Cerusia. It is a 19 slot uh, planet. We currently have two farms, one power plant, or rather two power plants, two mines, one lab. Um, I immediately see we have a slot here which is ripe for either food or minerals and 
I think I would prefer minerals. So let's suppress the food and get a mining network. We will grow our pop in that tile. What else is going on? Oh, we now have a crown princess, Gorum Schloss. What's she like? Huh. She doesn't look druish. Uh, she's an expansionist. And also a, re a reformer. So apparently our political dynasty is, uh... They're very politically minded. It's interesting. Okay, we are going to immediately build a mining station to take advantage of these minerals. Our science ship... You know what? We haven't even looked at the galactic scale. Okay, so we are in the galactic northeast. Nah, it's not a bad position. We have a choke point here. Well, technically we have three choke points. On a greater scale, we have one, two, three. In the south, it gets a little bit messier. So we could potentially carve this entire little bit for ourselves. Uh, provided, of course, there's no one else here. <laughs> okay, so we really need our science ship to begin surveying systems. As far as I recall, you cannot have your corvettes travel outside... Yeah, you need to explore a system with a civilian science ship before you can explore with military ships. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Just in my head cannon, it doesn't really make sense. But, whatever. Um, looking... Okay, so this is all new to me as well. Uh, this star base, this starport, has the capability of modules and buildings. We can eventually upgrade it to a star hold. <laughs> Once we get the technology and 750 minerals, so that's going to be it's going to be a ways off for us yet. Uh, we could put some additional module, well, an additional module in here. For example, a shipyard would increase our shipyard capacity. So what does that mean? Can we then build ships in parallel as opposed to in series? An anchorage would increase our fleet capacity. Gun battery, of course, would increase... ship hull points and armor hit points? What? Would that not increase damage output? Hard to say. Uh, we have a missile battery here as well. Okay, yeah, adds two torpedo weapon slots to the star base. Uh, is there a way to see... Oh, I see, here we go. Currently we have nuclear missiles and medium mass drivers, an assortment of shields and armor. Okay, that's a Gloib class starport, why not? And then of course we have our trading hub. For a cost of 100 minerals we can then create four energy credits. Which are great for supporting our uh, mineral, or rather our mining stations and our research stations. Uh, Cerusia has built that did I not change the rights? Oh, I see. I changed the default rights, which is not the same thing. <laughs> okay, we want full citizenship. Be free, my friends. Run free! Now you are free to buy burgers, slap each other's asses as much as you please. You need not fear the arm of the state. The long arm of the law suppressing your need to slap ass and eat burgers. Okay, so we are many months away, like 40 months away from growing this pop. Once we do, we will get four minerals. Um, I think we'll hold on to the energy credits for now. Take a look at our next system over, the tier mana system. Yeah, so there's quite a few resources here, a ton of minerals. We have some energy and, of course, some physics uh, research, which I am not at all opposed to researching. So, something else that's been added in Update 2.0 is the capability for certain stars to, have, to affect the entire star system. Like, you'll have a modifier that will affect shields, it will affect sublight speeds. Just to add a little bit of variety, they called it like galactic terrain or something, I'm not sure. So the CNS Pashgo has completed that mining station. And we have more than enough to build that science station as well. I think 
we will focus on science to begin with. Um, because, oh shit, the Voltuam, Voltaum Star Assembly. What in the fuck? We have recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization. Okay, before we continue, I need to ask you, what is this picture showing? For some reason, I can't help but feel it's a giant hand uncovering a ruined alien city. These look like like building-sized television screens. These, This looks like a ruined citadel or cathedral or something. This looks like a highway and then just a fucking ginormous hand. That's all I can see. Please, someone, describe to me what exactly is going on here. Okay, uh, they, missed, they must have been active in this region of space approximately 12 million with an M years ago. From what they have been able to piece together, our scientists theorize that these aliens, who called themselves the Voltom Star Assembly, were worm-like annelids, roughly 3 to 4 meters in length. GROSS! That communicated with each other primarily through vibrations in their ding-dongs. Very bizarre. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Let's issue another build. We don't have the minerals. Okay. Currently, we are 32 minutes into this video, and I think a few more minutes, maybe around the 35, 36 minute mark, we'll end it and move on to episode two. Uh, weeks after the CNS Workta, what a fucking name, latest fruitful exploratory survey, Cerusian xenologists are practically falling over themselves to publish their takes on the findings of Tirmana 4. Interesting. So we're all gung-ho about having found aliens. And I gotta say, that's just excellent. That's just excellent. We are... Somehow our star empire has grown in such a way to uh, be purpose-built for the subjugation of other empires. So <laughs> the faster we find empires, the greater our own will become. Okay, let us build that... How in the fuck... We have the technology. This planet is not within our borders. Oh, of course it isn't. Okay, so to extend our borders, I'm fairly certain we actually need to build star bases. So it would cost us 75 upkeep and 100 minerals to claim tier mana. I think we'll wait just to see what these other systems have, some of our other immediate systems. Perhaps they have greater resources. I doubt it, though. Six minerals here. Hard to beat. So, for the time being, the CNS Pashgo is just going to remain in orbit. Alrighty. Let's take a look at our capital again. You know what? I'm going to remove all of these for the time being. We will add new hotkeys when the time comes. I would like to clear away... These sprawling slums. Good lord. <laughs> How is it we're clearing away these slums? Filled with the poor and the outcast. Okay, so do we just relocate them? Do we slaughter them? Do we just shove them into fucking holes never to be seen from again? What are we doing with these poor people? Not entirely sure. All I know is that we're going to spend, essentially, 10 million energy credits. Or, you know, just a ton of currency to just make that problem go away. <laughs> Let's just spend some cash to relocate those those homeless people. Let's put them on a bus and send them to another jurisdiction. That always sounds like a that sounds like a good plan. Okay, so we have discovered a couple things in the Paragear system. First of all, we have an at Oh shit. We already have a new tradition. So let's talk about traditions, pick one, and we will end the episode. Okay, so immediately I am drawn to domination and supremacy. Because, of course, this will allow me to subjugate other empires. The main issue I have is we probably won't get to that point for some time. Harmony would be good for reducing unrest. I mean, discovery might be okay. Or expansion, perhaps? I am unsure... 
which <laughs> which tradition tree we should go for first. I think it's got to be domination or supremacy, either or. Which is kind of bizarre considering it's basically a synonym for each other, domination and supremacy. Diplomacy. You know, we could make an argument for diplomacy representing the, again, diplomatic nature of the Persian Empire, willing to buy you out rather than conquer you with force. Unfortunately, I think this is more suited towards federations and like, yeah. All right, uh, let's just take a look at the adoption effects. Starbase capacity, upgrade cost. So that would increase our capacity from three to five. That would mean our borders are larger. Domination will unlock vassalization as well as tribute. So immediately domination seems more important once we begin meeting different empires. Whereas if we go down the supremacy tree, it will increase our shipyard build speed. Our upgrade cost will be reduced. It will also reduce our claim influence cost. That's helpful. Fleet command limit increased by 20. Fire rate increased by 10. So that seems pretty useful when we actually want to conquer another... Conquer a neighbor. So, you know, we're going to go for supremacy first and foremost. Because I imagine the star bases are going to be pretty... Pretty useful. Nice. So if we were to upgrade the star base in Yabra, it now costs 600 as opposed to 750. That's pretty cool. All right, everyone. Uh, we need to end it here because this episode is getting a little bit long, but I hope you enjoyed the introductory episode of our Stellaris campaign. I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to go for, but nevertheless, we're going to play it at least five episodes. Maybe 50. I have no idea. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment, and as always, my name is Incoherence, you guys are fucking awesome, and I will see you all later.